This is a 2012 Fender 60s Road Worn Stratocaster in Olympic White. Now we've already cleaned the fretboard, polished the frets on this one. So we're just gonna start the setup. Sight down the neck and looks fairly flat. I see a little bit of relief maybe. So why don't we measure that? Yeah, there is some relief here. Tape on the first fret, and fret on the 14th, and then checking with uh, feeler gauge on the 8th, and I can tell it's more relief than 0 0.010. And that tells me right off that I wanna straighten out the neck a little bit. So I'll tighten that truss rod. Okay, so keep that cable on the first fret. Now I'll just loosen the strings. And two or three turns. And as you can see, we don't have truss rod adjustment up here. We're gonna have to get to it down at the base of the neck. So I just keep that um, capo on because then when I take off the neck, the strings don't flop around too much. And I, I put the capo off the edge of the table so the guitar's not resting on that capo. It's not stable that way. And just take these guys off. This is just how I do it. You can do it any way you want, but I don't even take the screws all the way out. I just wait until the neck pops up like that and very carefully flip the guitar over. Now you can get the neck out. And take a look at that truss rod adjustment screw. Take a nice solid flathead screwdriver and you want to loosen maybe quarter or half turn first just uh, to relieve any tension on the neck and then I'd say maybe three quarters of a turn and see where that puts us so now we get to put the neck back on and remeasure the relief. So if you're careful and just kind of put the strings back correctly, they'll just be right back in place once you tighten up the neck. Like that, tighten them up. Okay, capo's off, we tuned up, and I'm gonna play down here low on the neck. And because I can hear that it's all choked and fretting out down there, I think uh, we tightened a little too much. So I'm going to take the neck off again and adjust it a little looser. But first I'll get the exact measurement on this, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's just about .004, so it needs a little more relief to be happy off again and we'll just loosen uh, quarter turn and we'll see that where that puts us this is what's so fun about vintage guitars with the truss rod adjustment at the heel of the neck you get to take off and put on the neck a bunch of times sometimes so now Sounding a lot better down low. Take the measurement. I'll guess 0 .007. 0 .007, great place to be. The strings are probably a little low action-wise. Just a tiny bit below 060 at the 12th. 
so I'm going to raise the action a tiny and bit. And I like to just sit here with the action gauge. Do the saddles one by one this way. The high E. Actually bring down a tiny bit. Just going to try and put everything right about 060. Zero, and while I'm doing that, try and make those saddles conform to the next radius a little bit. G-string needs to come up a bit. Tune back up after setting the action. Down low, the strings are sounding good. Middle of the neck sounds pretty good. Sounding pretty good all over. Just playing some chords. Everything seems to be ringing pretty well. I always like to take a look at how the strings are sitting in the nut slots. And I noticed that um, they're all at a pretty nice height. Um, except for the B strings sitting a little higher than the others. And it's actually, you can tell even visually, if you just look straight across the strings this way, I can see the B strings sitting up a little higher than the others. Mm, this is just kind of a picky thing. I mean, the guitar is going to play fine as it is, but why not get it level with its buddies there? So, all you got to do is take it out of its nut slot and give it a nice little file. You can kind of see they didn't do the greatest job making this particular slot. If you see a slot that's, um, I don't know if it's in, there we go, better shot of it maybe, but if you see that it's kind of narrowed on the edge of one slot, in other words, it, it looks kind of uniform, and it kind of, but it kind of narrows, let's say at this edge, um, you want to try and get it so it's a nice uniform slot. <laughs> if it's narrow on one end, it could bind and that affects your tuning. And if you're tuning up sometimes and you hear that ping sound, as you're tuning up you hear ping, that means your string's <laughs> binding somewhere usually. <laughs> Most likely it's at the nut, other times it can be under something like a string tree. So let's see. Now it's sitting a little lower. I still might bring it down a tiny bit more. So we've got the nut nicely situated. And I meant to show earlier when I did the action. That's what it ended up like. And you can see that I've got the strings just following a nice easy little bend going like that. They're not straight across. So they're kind of following the curve of the neck. This is a 7.25 inch radius neck, so it's got a curve. And so, so do the saddles and the strings. Just starting the intonation on this guy. And the high E. And tune open. Just a tiny touch sharp at the 12th, so close. Retune, perfect, B string. So we've got this all nicely intonated now. I can tell those triads sound good all up and down the neck. Nice to plug in and just make sure 
Everything's nice and quiet as far as the switch. No crackly knobs. Jack's not making noise. 